sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing with the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, 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 my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. Your rich in love and your slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is gone. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. nice and loud. Thank you. Just a few announcements this morning. Um, tomorrow night, the softball team is in the semifinal Woo game. So come out and support them. They'll be at Bailey Baptist Church out Possum Track Road. Um, the adult book club will meet on Tuesday morning. Pub ministry meets Tuesday evening. The fellowship committee is looking for bakers to help bake for different events. Um, and you can contact Deb Cocarelli, or if you don't know her address, her email address, contact Jane at the office, and Jane can give that to you. Um, there will be one service at 10 o'clock next week. It's the fifth Sunday, and uh, as our, our new tradition on the fifth Sunday, we have one combined service. So it'll be at 10 o'clock. If you come at 9 o'clock, you'll be too early. If you come at 11 o'clock, you'll probably meet people leaving. Um, and the preschool is still accepting registrations for the 22-23 school year. So if you know anybody who might benefit from that, please pass that along. Are there any other announcements? Okay. Then please stand for our prayer of the people. Into places of conflict. May your, May your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Into the heart of the terrorist. May your kingdom come. Into the heart of the soldier. May your kingdom come. Into the heart of the politician. May your kingdom come. Into the heart of one bereaved by war. May your kingdom come. Into the heart of one made hungry. May your kingdom come. Into the heart of one made homeless. May your, May your kingdom come. Into the heart of one who is in despair. May your kingdom come. Into the heart of one who is ill. May your kingdom come. Into the heart of one who has been abused. May your kingdom come. 
into the heart of one who is addicted. May your kingdom come. Into the heart of one who is faced with unpayable debt. May your kingdom come. Into the heart of the lonely. May your kingdom come. Into the heart of the fearful. May your kingdom come. Into the heart of the depressed. May your kingdom come. Into the heart of those we wish to pray for. May your kingdom come. Into the heart of our world. May your kingdom come. Lord, teach us to pray so we might discover your kingdom as revealed in our sisters and brothers. So we might declare your glory as we gather together. Lord, Lord teach, teach us, us to, to pray. pray. So we might forgive those who have wronged us. So we might trust your perfect plans and not replace them with our own. So we might love you with our whole hearts and love our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, Lord teach, teach us, us to pray. pray. So we might declare your glory as we gather together. Lord, Lord teach, teach us, us to pray. pray. You may be seated. This is a longer reading today. Our reading today comes from the 11th chapter of Luke. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight, and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answered from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked. And my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask for him? Word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Fortune lies beyond the stars, those dazzling heights too vast to climb. I got so high to fall so far, but I found heaven as love swept low. My heart beating, my soul breathing, I found my life when I laid it down. A foot falling, spirit soaring. What treasure waits within your scars? This gift of freedom gold can't find. 
above the world and sold my heart. He traded heaven to have me again. My heart beating, my soul beating. I found my life when I laid it down. I put falling, spirit soaring. I touched the sky. trying God, you alone live in perfect relationship, one God in three persons, mutual and loving, ever seeking reconciliation and unity. You have called us to live in your completion, yet we confess that our relationships are imperfect and we are incomplete without you. We are selfish and greedy. We are anxious and resenting. We feel the shame of our foolish behavior and brokenness. We have allowed sin to drive us apart from one another and from you. Forgive us and restore us. Draw us close and bind us together in your mercy. May we long for wholeness and peace. May we strive toward gratitude and grace. In the saving name of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the working power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. God desires to see broken relationships restored and has heard our prayer. In the name of Jesus the Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. All these pieces broken and scattered In mercy gathered, mended and whole Empty-handed, but not forsaken I've been set free, I've been set free Amazing grace, how sweet the sound the wretch like me Oh, I once was lost But now I am found Was blind, but now I see Oh, I can see you now Oh, I can see the love in your eyes Laying yourself down Raising up the broken to life. You take our failures, you take our weakness, you 
set your treasure in jars of clay to take this heart lord i'll be your vessel the world to see your life in me oh amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me Whoa, i once was lost but now i am found was blind but now i see the broken to life. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Whoa, I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see. As God calls us together in community, we look, we look to, to God, God for guidance, forgiveness, forgiveness and, and love. As God calls us together as a community, we look, we look to, to each, each other for companionship, companionship forgiveness, forgiveness, and love. Let us pass the peace of God and greet each other in community. The peace of the Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you, Lisa. Lisa. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Come and let your glory, come and let your glory fall. Our Father, who art in heaven, the rocks cry out your fame. Come and let your glory, come and let your glory fall. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song to the Lord. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, every heart proclaim. 
mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven. God, God give, give us a new every morning mercy as daily bread. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus we pray. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us with your hand. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus we pray. Father, we pray. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song to the Lord. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of your name, on earth as it is in heaven. For the kingdom is yours, and the power is yours, and the glory forever, amen. And the kingdom is yours, and the power is yours, and the glory forever, amen. For the kingdom is yours, and the power is yours, and the glory forever, amen. For the kingdom is yours, and the power is yours, and the glory forever, amen. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of your name, on earth as it is in heaven. Good morning. Good morning. Let us pray. <clears throat> Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of this new day. We thank you for a beautiful summer day outside and for the opportunity once again to worship you in spirit and in truth uh, to gather with one another, this assembly of saints, uh, to walk alongside one another, to accompany one another. To share our joys and sorrows, our burdens and pains. Your word instructs us to ask, to seek, and to knock. So this morning we ask, we seek, and we knock for peace in Ukraine, for healing for Chuck and Cindy Wolf. We seek healing and transformation and joy in our lives. We ask that you would touch us where we need you the most, where we are the most broken and depressed and sad. And put us back together again. We pray for your will to be done. Most of all, we pray that you would draw near to us. And that you would constantly give us the guidance and the peace. And the consolation of your Holy Spirit. We need you, Lord. We cannot do life without you. Speak, Lord. Before your servants listen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A sermon text for this morning is the gospel from Luke, Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. My sermon title for today is taken from three words from the middle of the last verse. My sermon title for today is How Much More? How Much More? Today's text is an essential text and it is Absolutely critical that we understand it and apply it correctly. 
My own personal opinion is that this particular text and others like it has been hijacked, misunderstood, and abused by a certain section of Christianity, while on the other hand being totally ignored by another section. Proponents of what is commonly known as the prosperity gospel, uh, that is the health and wealth gospel, mistakenly employ this text in a name it and claim it type of manner, while a more intellectually refined mainline Christianity almost totally ignores it in a knee-jerk reaction against the abuses of the former group. The overall topic, as you can see, is prayer. How to do it, what to say, what to ask for, and in what manner or posture to ask. You can also see there in your text, one could roughly divide this text into two parts. Verses 1 through 4, the content of prayer, namely what we call the Lord's Prayer. And verses 5 through 13, the manner or the posture of prayer, namely persistence. Verse 1 provides our context. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished praying, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. So the whole content of what follows comes out of the context of Jesus himself praying. His teachings on prayer result from a question concerning prayer, which itself results from his own act of praying. Neither Mark nor John record the Lord's Prayer in their Gospels, intriguingly and incidentally, but Matthew does in chapter 6 verse 9 as a part of Jesus's Sermon on the Mount. It is rather intriguing to me that one of Jesus' disciples would have asked him, Lord, teach us to pray, or teach us how to pray. Since, in fact, all of them are Jewish, and they would have grown up knowing how to pray, and whom to call upon. As Jews, they had a rich heritage, a fruitful history of being God's chosen people, Descended from Abraham and Sarah, possessing the law, the prophets, and the writings, that is the entirety of Scripture and the covenants, and bequeathing to the world monotheism, that is belief in only one God. So it's not as if they didn't know how to pray, whom to call upon, which prayers to recite morning, noon, and night, before and after meals, during Sabbath, at the festivals of Passover, weeks, tabernacles, Purim, and Hanukkah. If the Jews knew anything, my friends, they knew how to pray. They prayed their way through Canaan, through bondage and slavery down in Egypt, through the Red Sea, for 40 years through the wilderness wanderings, across the River Jordan, into the Promised Land, through the period of the Judges, through the United Kingdoms of Saul, David, and Solomon, through the divided kingdoms of Israel and Judah, through the Assyrian exile of the north and the Babylonian exile of the south, through the return home and the rebuilding of the temple, through the rule of the Persians, the Greeks, and now the Romans. The Jews had seen it all and done it all. They had religiously and theologically been there, done that, gotten the t-shirt. They knew the revealed name of Yahweh from a burning bush on Mount Sinai's height. They had been up the mountain, through the valley, over the rough places, through the crooked places. They knew who they were. They knew whose they were. They knew that their God was omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent, and that they were God's people. So they, like we, know how to pray. So how does this particular unnamed disciple sound? Lord, teach us to pray. They already knew how to pray. Or did they? We already know how to pray. Or do we? Maybe they saw or heard something different for the first time. Watching Jesus pray. Maybe they wanted to go deeper. Maybe they were weary of superficial, shallow, on-the-surface prayers filled with a Santa Claus list of petitions that were never met anyway. 
We don't know if Jesus prayed short or long here in this text, if he prayed quietly or aloud, if he prayed utterly motionless or like a whirling dervish, mystical, rapturous, speaking in tongues. We just don't know. But whatever it was, whatever happened, whatever was modeled was apparently different. And apparently appealing enough that the disciples remark, we want some of that. We want to tap in to that. I want to commune with God like that. What follows is a truncated, abbreviated version of the Lord's Prayer. Verses 2 through 4 are the content of this timeless prayer. The fuller version, with which most of us are familiar and which we pray weekly here, can be found in Matthew's Gospel. Chapter 6, beginning with verse number 9. The final doxology, as it were, was added by later Protestant church tradition uh, based on King David's prayer in 1 Chronicles chapter 29. It's actually not taught by Jesus, but was added later. And that is, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffice it to say, structurally speaking, the first portion of the prayer concerns honoring and reverencing God. While the second portion concerns our human petitions to Him. We honor and reverence God for who God is first. Father, hallowed be Your name, Your kingdom come. And then we present Our needs and petitions to God. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. Essentially our three needs here are bread, forgiveness, and salvation or deliverance. Physical sustenance. Spiritual rejuvenation. And divine rescue. We need food. Forgiveness of our sin. And save us from the time of trial. Following verses 5 through 8. Jesus addresses the matter of persistence in prayer. Indeed his example really is almost comical. Ending with the sentiment. Even though he won't get up and give him anything because he is his friend. At least because of his persistence. He will get up and give him whatever he needs. The point, which is the exact same as in the parable of the widow and the unjust judge found in chapter 18, a little bit later here in Luke's gospel, is that even if God doesn't respond to your prayer request out of love, friendship, or affection, He will just to get you to stop annoying and irritating Him with your constant request. You're wearying Him out by continually coming to Him as the other parable puts it. It's quite funny when you think about it. The thought or the imagery that God would grant our prayer requests simply so that we'd quit bothering Him with them. Who says Jesus doesn't have a sense of humor? Next, in verses 9 and 10, Jesus pronounces the by now memorable and famous adage, which seems to be misused and abused as much as it is benignly ignored. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. And then in a deliberately redundant manner for emphasis, he adds, for everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will, in fact, be opened. This encouraging and empowering sentiment is found elsewhere in Scripture too. The psalmist sings, for example, Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. In John's Gospel, Jesus declares, Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, may He give it to you. And then in James, it is written, you do not have because you do not ask. 
And in Matthew and Mark's Gospels, Jesus announces, whoever says to this mountain, a mountain now, be taken up and cast to the sea, cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, truly it shall be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it shall be yours. What is all that? If not, name it and claim it. And so we embrace these verses, we believe in them, we affirm them, we ask and seek and knock away persistently, trusting and hoping that God will answer, even if, especially if, we become irritating and annoying. And yet, and yet, if it were really that simple, the whole world would be healthy. The whole world would be wealthy. Every single person would have enough to get by every single day. No one would be in need. No one would be in the hospital or in jail. No one would be poor. Everybody would hit the lottery and tithe 10% or more of your winnings to the church. You know you've told that to God before. Every marriage would be healthy and successful. And every parent-child relationship would be mutually loving and supportive. Everybody in here knows in your heart of hearts that you have prayed and asked for something in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit to make you whole and healthy and complete, to bring you joy and peace, to enable you to praise, honor, and glorify God, and you didn't get it. What to do on those occasions? What sense to make of that? What does that say about the Bible? Your faith. You. God. My friends, God-fearing people die every day. Of poverty, disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, and starvation. Jesus-loving people suffer every day from loneliness, heartache, depression, and despair. God-beloved people get hit and beat and shot and mugged and raped every day. Their family dissolving around them despite their own best efforts, despite looking to heaven for guidance. And I guarantee you that many of them are praying and asking and seeking and knocking in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit and aren't receiving the kind of answers that make sense to them or to you and me. Jesus gives us the coup de grace on prayer. And the key to wisdom and understanding, I believe, In verses 11 through 13. Is there any among you who if your child asks for a fish will give them a snake? Or if they ask for an egg will give them a scorpion? So if you then who are evil. (laughs) Thanks Jesus. Know how to give good gifts to your children. How much More will the Heavenly Father give what? The Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. Herein, God is the parent par excellence, much kinder and supportive and more generous than we, even on our best day. We are God's children, and so we trust in God's parental benevolence and sustenance. Interestingly enough, Jesus seems to presume here that what you and I have been seeking after the whole time is the Holy Spirit. He presumes what we've been asking and seeking and knocking for is not a new car or house or jewelry or a man, a woman, a child, but rather the Holy Spirit. And what he promises here is none of those other things, but instead... The Holy Spirit. 
The Holy Spirit, my friends, is God. It is the third person of the Trinity. So what Jesus is instructing and encouraging us to ask for, to seek out, and to knock for, and what He promises we will in fact receive, is God. And if we receive God, we receive the attributes of God. Wisdom. Patience. Forgiveness, love, joy, peace, gentleness, reconciliation, resurrection, new life, hope, trust. Those are what's promised. That's what's guaranteed. That's how we prosper in those ways. I'm talking about asking, seeking, and knocking for, and then receiving the Holy Spirit. It begs the question, for me anyway, the how much? In what measure will we receive the Holy Spirit? I mean, is it just a dab? A little bit? A portion? A double portion? One of my... Favorite, albeit more obscure, biblical passages is John chapter 3, verse 34. It reads there, God gives the Spirit without measure. God gives the Spirit without measure. That means God doesn't measure it out. Or apportion it by increments. An ounce, a cup, a quart, a gallon. That's why Psalm 23 says, My cup, what? Runneth over. And Luke 6 says, Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be placed into your lap. It's gushing out. It's gushing forth. It's overflowing. So, if everyone in here right now is asking, seeking, and knocking for the Holy Spirit, And receiving that Holy Spirit as Jesus promised. And it's given without measure. Overflowing your container. Running all over your life. Then all of a sudden things take on a new perspective. When I assess my life in the here and now. I often get frustrated and stressed. I think that I have often asked and not received. Salt and not found. Knocked and had nothing open to me at all. That I've gone with unmet needs. But when I look back at my life. In the rear view mirror. And I take inventory. I am amazed. I feel blessed and fortunate. I feel forgiven. I see the hundreds of thousands of chances God has given me. I feel incredulous. God has provided all of my needs and many, many, many of my wants. I've never lacked for food or clothing or shelter. I didn't die. I'm here today alive. I'm not in the hospital. I'm not in jail. Are you dead? Are you dead? No. Are you in jail right now? No. Are you free? Yes. When I think about the goodness of the Lord. What God has done for you and for me. Our cup overflows. God has done far more abundantly for us according to Ephesians 3. Than all we can ask, imagine, or even conceive. Our collective testimony this morning. All together is that grace has brought us safe thus far. And grace will lead us home. Oh, I think if we can put cynicism aside for the moment and be spiritually honest about God, ourselves, and our abundant blessings, we will see that we have asked, we have sought out, we have knocked, and we have received. In the last verse, it says, If you then, if y'all folk who are evil know how to give good gifts, how much more, how much more, Will the heavenly father. That means weighing humans with God. And concluding how much more. 
oh, my mama has been good to me, but how much more? My daddy has been good to me, but how much more? My son Grant has been good to me, but how much more? Tristan, my other son, has been good to me, but how much more? Mediator Lutheran Church, Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Joy of Discovery Lutheran Bishop, and now St. Philip Lutheran Church have all been good to me, but how much more? Detroit, Connecticut, North Carolina, Philadelphia, Georgia have been good to me, but how much more? Family and friends, colleagues and co-workers, my schools and educational opportunities have all been good to me, but how much more? Won't you join me in stacking it all up in your life? Adding it all together. Putting it all on the scales and all in the balances. And because of the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the fact that you are right now receiving the Holy Spirit without measure. Just overflowing every cup and pot and pan you got. Blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing. And concluding with three simple words. How much more? How much more? Amen. You can continue to send them to the church through the U.S. mail. You can give online at the URL on the screen. Or if you're here today, you can leave them in the offering plate at the back of the church. Thank you. Beautiful God, lay your majesty aside. You reached out in love to show me light. Lifted from darkness into light. Oh, came for a slave, trading your righteousness for shame. Despite all my pride and foolish ways, caught in your infinite embrace, oh, oh, oh. and I find myself here on my knees again, caught up in grace like an avalanche. Nothing compares to. This love, 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 burning in my heart. Savior and friend, breathing your life into my heart. Your word is a lamp unto my
Please stand for our profession of faith. We believe, praise, and thank you, loving God, for you have visited and redeemed your people. In the fullness of time, your word shared our human frailty, living as a baby, a child, a youth, and an adult in this remarkable yet at times crazy world. We believe that in Jesus we have been shown what you are always like, that his light is your light, his truth the divine truth, his peace and love is the peace and love that lasts forever. Because of Christ Jesus, the living word in our laughter, you are our joy, in sickness our healing, in turmoil our serenity, and in our grief you are that sweetest peace which this busy world cannot give. We believe in you, we trust you, and we worship you, God most wonderful. Amen. We celebrate together now the Lord's Supper, the feast of Holy Communion. Scripture tells us that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together, let us pray as Jesus asks. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the distribution. Uh, we invite you to come forward down the center aisle here in a single file line to receive the bread, Jesus' body, followed by the wine or grape juice, Jesus' blood, for the forgiveness of all your sins and the conferral of eternal life.
you hide. Oh, how far I'd scale the valleys if you graced the other side. Oh, how long have I chased rivers from lowly seas to where they rise against the rush of grace descending from the source of its supply. Cause in the highlands and the heartache, you're neither more or less inclined. I would search and stop at nothing. You're just not that hard to find. I will praise you on the mountain. I will praise you in the mountains in my way. You're the summit where my feet are. I will praise you in the valleys all the same. No less God within the shadows. No less faithful when the night leads me astray. You're the heaven where my heart is. In the highlands and the heartache all the same. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, how far beneath your glory. Does your kindness extend the path from where your feet rest on the sunshine to where you sweep the sinner's past? Oh, how fast would you come running if just a shadow me through the night? Trace my steps through all my failures and walk me out the other side. For who could dare ascend the mountain, that valley hill called Calvary? But for the one I called the shepherd, who like a lamb was slain for me. I will praise you on the mountain. I will praise you in the mountains in my way. You're the summit where my feet are. I will praise you in the valleys all the same. No less God within the shadows. No less faithful when the night leads me astray. You're the heaven where my heart is. In the islands and the heartache all the same. Oh. that you please rise at this time to receive our post-communal blessing. Now may the eating of Christ's body and the drinking of His blood strengthen you, keep you, and preserve you in His grace. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, 
with this bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us as one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we proclaim your redeeming love to all the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Siblings in Christ, what is our purpose? Jesus asks that we love the Lord our God with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. Jesus tells us that a second is like it. We shall love our neighbors as ourselves. We answer that call and we go out to share the love of Christ. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, in your goodness, you pour out on your people all that they need and satisfy those who persist in prayer. Make us bold in asking, thankful in receiving, tireless in seeking, and joyful in finding, that we may always proclaim your coming kingdom and do your will on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and figure out how much more. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.